please leave a message after the tone. (laughs) Oh, man, that caught me off guard. That was so funny. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome to our show. We're soft spoken. We're we're, we're, we're here from the meditation program. And this is just how we sound naturally. We're going to rock you to sleep now. That's such a soothing voice. I, 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 I could be a chameleon like that. Sure. That's just Camille. fine. Chick, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a great long time. I am great. I am, you know, a lot tanner than you. So that's good. Looking yeah, everybody's that. more tanner than me. That's not saying much. Yeah, no, I'm really more. Good. This isn't look at how, this is what I do. Look like, by the way, the one tan, you see more pink. It's almost red at this point. I got a little yeah, sun on the roof the uh, at the restaurant that I work at. You weren't that color like five minutes ago. So you must be getting hot because you were definitely a lot paler. And... I was laughing at that that <laughs> that Siri imitation, the the, the introduction, which was so <laughs> it literally so it was like a robot. I love how like everybody's like they'll go with like some sort of a, a song or like a, a cool like intro or whatever. It's just <laughs> it Recording ours sounds like a robotic answering machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The person you are looking for is not in right now. <laughs> Oh my I god. I love it. So, so good. guys, we're back. We're back with episode, I think, 15. We went on a little month hiatus, but um, we're back at it with a new name. So we have changed to Simplified Health. Why? Just because uh, our last name, yeah, just because our last name wasn't very applicable to what we were doing. And it just makes a lot more sense to give us a name that actually speaks to what we're doing here. And what that is, is we are simplifying everything health and fitness related and basically taking topics that are super popular in the health and fitness injury and breaking it down. And injury. So here we are. Did I say injury? It, uh, I think you meant industry, but yeah. Industry. Yeah. Wait, industry. It, it, it happens. Been a month. Jig, you're back, alone. dude. I love this when you do that. Oh, shit. No, you're back. I love when you do that. You do that every <laughs> once in a while. We're human, though. We make mistakes. And I love what you just said. You're absolutely right. When people want to, and this probably just spills right into the the main topic of our show, we try our best to use our language and simplify it uh, to a point where people who haven't joined our classes and don't speak the language uh, that we speak to get to quick places, we help them out. We help the general population out. We take the information from the classroom. We remove the textbook setting. And we try to put it in a uh, in a way where we can dialogue each other. We can just bounce like ideas back and forth from each other, and we simplify things. And of course, we're on the uh, it's we're 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 we're, we're going to talk a lot more about fitness because that falls under the umbrella of health. But I do feel like this new name can really broaden our horizon. We can talk about way more things than just things related to fitness. Now we can talk about things related to general health because people want more, and we're ready to give them more. And here we are giving more more so the content that we provide will all be put onto a youtube channel that i'm going to be starting but in the meantime every all the previous content will still be on the all podcast platforms so you know apple spotify whatever you name it it's there take the audio as you can and then the video will come with our new episodes so we're not starting over we're going to keep all the content that we had we're not going to bore you with repeating anything that we've already talked about but we are going to just keep it rolling and so here we are today it's a beautiful freaking day it is a gorgeous day i'm looking outside right now I'm and that's start- one of the reasons why my face is a little pink too i'm not blushing i'm not doing any <laughs> of that embarrassing stuff it is a little uh it's a little on the muggy side, but that's okay. Um, sweating is is a, is a natural part of my life, so I look outside and I love it. I have both of my windows open. It's a nice, beautiful breeze. It's not too much. You're right. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. So speaking of beautiful day, I was mowing the lawn at like eleven o'clock. I know it's kind of a weird time because I guess it's hot out. I don't know. I got so much shit for that, but I was mowing the lawn. <laughs> okay. And I to try and keep it a pretty to a pretty short and to the point story. I was at the top of my lawn. So basically I can see all of the houses in my front yard and, um, or, you know, in front of my front yard and I can see the street, can see the sidewalk, whatever. I get to the top of the hill and I hear 
basically like five loud noises, like pa 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 pa, but spread out. And I'm like, what? Mm, I don't know. I just kept mowing the lawn. I'm like, eh, it was probably like those pop. A little rocks, early for whatever. fireworks. Yeah, it was definitely not fireworks because it was spread out, but it could have been those. It sounded kind of like those pop rocks. I don't know. I was mowing the lawn, so things were echoing weird. And mm. so I decided to, you know, shut off my lawnmower, my little toy lawnmower that looks, it's so ridiculous. People driving by, like, I can just feel the laughter. <laughs> but um, Look, she's learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's, uh, she's who's trying. That who's that little immigrant mowing the lawn she's like four feet tall <laughs> she must be Megan. she's so dark i'm so <laughs> yeah, pale literally. all i can see is her teeth oh my god <laughs> so she's racist she's doing blackface <laughs> so i i decided i'm like i stop and i look across the street and i'm like what like all right what was that something must have happened i see this guy uh basically He's just walking around the house across the street from me and he's looking weird. He's looking very anxious and kind of like he's trying to like figure something out, what he's doing, whatever. Long story short, ended up being that the guy, he, he made direct eye contact with me after he had shot up someone's house and then booked it. And okay. so I'm here. So I've, I've learned a lesson with this is don't be so fucking naive because <laughs> I mean, the guy, there was clearly something going on. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to mow my lawn. Hey, gunshots? Okay. And the guy could have easily just been like, oh, she saw me. Papa. But anyways, he, the guy was caught. He was put into custody. But um, it was just a very eventful morning. I, I felt like very stupid afterwards. I'm thinking to myself, how? I was talking to the cop because they questioned me. And he's like, yeah, so... Um, wait, you saw it happen? And I'm, well, I mean, I didn't see the gunshots. I saw the guy. He's like, you didn't know. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's the mm -hmm. lawnmower. Yeah, they're, they're going to ask those questions. You're taking it like really chill. I feel like it's like there's there's not like much drama to follow after this. I mean, you uh, did you did you see a gun in hand by any chance? Or I didn't. did you? OK, never mind. OK, I was about so to say when if, I if saw he was, like, the running, guy. OK. When I saw the guy, he, I don't know like what he had done with the gun, but basically I looked at him and I saw that he didn't have anything in his hand. So I was just like, I wasn't too worried. You know, if I had seen the weapon, I probably would have shit my pants and been like, and I don't, I don't even know what I would have done, but mm -hmm. I didn't see what is, it. What does one do? Yeah. And then literally not even a minute later, I shit you not a minute later. 15 cop cars um, came speeding in. They were, they searched the whole premise. They got, they got him in custody and whatever. All is good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It was just a very interesting morning for me. I'm like, okay. I feel like you're taking this so <laughs> cool, calm and collective. Like you knew, you, you knew that the guy had shot up something for some reason, whether it was house people have no idea, whatever. So, and it's just like <laughs> you're just like, yeah, I'm just mowing the lawn here. Yeah, don't yeah, don't step on my grass or I'll I'll sh I'll shoot you or something well, like that. Like, honestly, no, you were just was, like, oh, hey, you know, you're, you're having a gun and I'm almost out of gas. <laughs> yeah, I was actually pissed because I couldn't finish mowing my lawn. I'm like, this is bullshit. I got a podcast to do at two o'clock. Like, <laughs> so, so the cops came to question me. And when they were done, I was like, so uh, this might be a weird time to ask, but can I finish mowing my lawn? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to have course. people hear the gunshots, but these weeds are getting ridiculous, officer. <laughs> oh my so god! Anyways, wow. Uh, great morning. I, I can't. I can't one up that story, and I. I. I'm not really one to do that. My. I, I have a gun, so I used to. Uh, I used to manage a liquor store in a train station, real tiny, like about the size of my coffin of a room. Really, really small place. We had a register and like a desk and like the room was filled with shelves of alcohol and we had one fridge in the back and it was for people who rode the train after work um, who didn't have to drive. They went in and they grabbed their stuff and it is what it is. And one day I remember I was half an hour in my shift and the shift really doesn't pick up until about like four thirty, five o'clock. So uh, my prep was already done and I'm just hanging out, waiting for people to come in. I see this guy running 
from the top of the train tracks all the way out to a street called Washington Boulevard, uh, which is the street that spills out. This door opens and you're pretty much right there in Stanford. And this guy, I could see the gun in his right hand. All right. He had his gun drawn and everything just running past and he was being chased by four officers. That's about the closest encounter that I've ever had with a weapon outside of a gun range. So I don't, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's my gun too. story. And it's, it doesn't even compare to the lawnmower story. So that's all I've ever well, had. I, I, think... I, I wish I can have a better gun story, but that's it. Like they got the guy right outside the door. I stepped out of my store and he was like, you know, three stores down outside on his, um, on his stomach being put in handcuffs. And the gun was like way off uh, on the ground uh, sta- uh, being stood over by a police officer. Cause I think that they're going to try to get prints or something like that, but not exciting. Going to be honest. It is, it is though. It's just, I think the weird like holy shit the guy had a gun for some reason at a train station like that should be enough that's pretty ridiculous yeah but no nothing nothing beyond that I don't have anything juicy or colorful um it are simplified health we're not here to create stories folks absolutely not I just wanted to share that story because it's been a while and I needed to ease into this you know I got to use my brain for science it's I've been out of school for like a week and a half I just shut off so um but this is where we segue I posted something to Instagram a couple of days ago talking. It was kind of, so I don't want to say it was a rant, but kind of a rant. And I was telling, I was sharing my opinion on what people do or what people are portraying when they say something like, for example, oh, well, you know, I was reading something and they said, blah, blah, blah. Or, well, you know, they say that blah, blah, blah is bad for you. They also say blah, blah, blah. You know, just hypothetically speaking, you can, you know, structure that sentence however you want. But Mm -hmm. it really bothers me when people provide information and kind of turn it into a fact or make it seem as though it is clear cut. This is what it is. This is what that person said, and this is why I believe them. And when it comes to health and fitness injury, (laughs) the the health and fitness fitness industry, Mm -hmm. it's really difficult to help share and spread knowledgeable information with people when you aren't providing an opinion. Because at the end of the day, you can't, there isn't really anything that is clear cut set in stone when it comes to science. I mean, we have, there is, but we don't, we have more things that are really unclear than we do clear. So I had just stated that if somebody does that to you, if you're the person that you're in a conversation with uh, somebody else and they say, well, they said, stop them and be like, who's they? I do it all the time, not to be an asshole. Cause initially they'll be like, all right, bitch. But then, (laughs) (laughs) well, you know what they say. I read that somewhere. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's just a quick challenge. Like, hey, I I just want to know where you got that information from. It's not a challenge where, oh, I think you're wrong and I'm going to make sure. And I'm just trying to find out uh, where you got this from so that I can counter uh, point that and we can start an argument. No, it sounds like that, but that's not what we're doing. We're used to. Um, doing that in college a lot, people would say, well, where did you get that information from? Because you have to list it and remember the MLA format with the shit in the back of the fucking report that I could. Yeah. Oh my God. The work cited page. I understood oh, yeah. why I hated it back then, but after I graduated and on the, I should say on the way out of graduation, um, I finally understood because when people just talk, they can make up their own things and they could just say things with no references And that creates problems. That is not okay. Misinformation and then miscommunication is then uh, it it, it takes the problem and expands it. So I absolutely and I I, I didn't get that until later. Yeah, but and to go with that, I'm not saying that the person needs to be like so and so quoted. I'm sorry, I just got really pissed off. I hated the work cited parts. Jesus yeah. Christ in college. Like, okay, make sure that you spell that author's last name and you're supposed to underline his first name and put a period at the end of this. They wanted it so specifically. That's the part that drove me nuts. But I understand why. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And a work cited isn't necessarily something that's 
utilized in the real world. Like when you're having, we're talking, having a conversation, I have to do so many citations for school. I don't care about Mm -hmm. that shit. Like to me, that's just, you know, structural, strategical. It is what it is. You got to do it. You got to have it in there, blah, blah, blah. And it's useful as a researcher because it helps you find a source. If it's structured in a specific manner, you can find the author, you know, which authors are involved, what the year is, blah, blah, blah. No, we're talking humans. We're talking your everyday conversation with the friend in the gym. And you want to give them advice about uh, some specific, so the ketogenic type of diet or the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, well, they said that the ketogenic diet can cause, um, what's an example? can cause you to feel really hungry and can cause you to get a lot of headaches and feel really tired and this, this, and that. Okay. Well, where's, how did you, where did you find that? Okay. You don't then go and say, well, Dr. Mangone from 1995 at all 2020, blah, blah, blah. Like you don't (laughs) then go and cite what you're talking about, but you can say, well, I had looked at this source, this article, and it had said, blah, blah, blah. And this is how I took it. And how do you, so here we are. How do you find that article? How can you actually find a reliable article that you can go and have a conversation with somebody and give them that information? Is it just Googling? Um, is the key, does the ketogenic diet give you a headache? Juggy, how would you do it? If you were curious to know about the side effects of a ketogenic diet, how would you search it? Um, I would probably go to some form of reputable nutrition site. Um, like the, the, the first thing that people usually would do is to go to Google and search ketogenic diet and then go from there. And that just sounds like a lot of work, but um, I usually go to specific nutrition sites and they usually end in... Um, they, they don't usually end in .com. They usually end in something else. That's Boom. more what, what I like to refer to as reputable, which yes. is an important word that I like to throw out because reputable to me, if I'm going to say this in a simplified manner, is a domain where people recognize that as factual, as evidence, as case studies that have been pr- that have proven things. Or peer-reviewed. Um, that, right. Thank Just you. Sum yeah, all absolutely. of that up. So Which it's is a been huge overlooked thing. by scientists, by people right. with PhDs, by medical doctors, maybe by the government. Some people might disagree with that, but it's been, it's a peer reviewed source. Right. Or it comes right. directly from a peer reviewed source. Yeah. Which is a why one, it's not a com. Yeah. One of the, one of the big ones that I like to go to a lot is the, uh, because there's so many interesting stories in there, the American medical journal. That's one that have that has different issues and what seems like countless case studies on uh, on 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 various specific things. If I'm not mistaken, this is a fun fact. I read this somewhere. Um, The House episodes are based on uh, case studies of the American Medical Journal. Remember that show House with I I think his name is Dr. House is a boss. Right. That, that I believe, and I could be mistaken. This is why I say these things. I might be wrong. This is a big, maybe this goes along with the theme of the show. I'm not saying this is a hundred percent fact. I'm pretty darn sure though, that each episode is a separate case study in the American medical journal. And the point of that is, is that they can base a show on something that happened in real life because the American medical journal is a peer reviewed, one of the top reputable sources out there. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm using a resource. That's like the, that, that one of the pinnacle of the mountains uh, of, of what we, uh, of, of what we study. Uh, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong uh, for sure. Cause you're the, you're, you've, you're, you're going for your PhD. And I, I, I think you've heard of the medic, the American medical journal. I would yes, hope. It's absolutely you know? a valid peer reviewed uh, search engine to utilize, but that's really interesting. I don't want to steer away from that topic just yet. That's super interesting. Uh, so for people that haven't watched House and you are interested in just, you don't have to be a doctor to be interested in it, but you can learn a lot just about basic things that may happen to you or your family members, or you know some of the terminology may be a little bit far out there for you to understand if you haven't really had any background in physiology or anatomy or, you know, any medical background, but I think that's, I had absolutely no idea that 
each episode was based on a case study. So each episode is based on a real life thing, which is, it makes it more reputable because it's, it makes it more realistic, right? Something that's, that did happen. And uh, anyways, Mm -hmm. the, yes, the peer reviewed. So that journal is good, but the problem with the general public or, you know, just your average Joe who likes to work out and likes to stay fit, stay healthy is that if they go to, you know, a journal article like that, they are going to have a hard time understanding number one, how to use it. And number Very two, true. how to disseminate the information because there can be a lot. So <laughs> disseminate. <laughs> did I say that wrong? No, no, you said disseminate. That's, that's the right word. I'm just being D silly. Or dis? I think it's D. I think it's disseminate. disseminate because there's already an S there for seminate. So it's like, it's disseminate. D disseminate. I'll have to look that up in a reputable source someday. (laughs) I'll have to look at a peer reviewed dictionary. (laughs) So they have these dot gov articles. So anytime I look up something on Google and I don't want to do an extensive search, search, I basically (laughs) just go to Google. I type in whatever it is that I want to see and then put dot gov next to it. This way I'm weeding out all of the dot com sources or, um, dot org sources the dot gov source is going to be the most reputable source that you can find just by performing a very simple google search we're not talking you know clinical research we're not talking an in-depth research study we're just talking this dot gov source is pulling from multiple different areas and giving you a general synopsis of whatever it is that you're looking at Mm-hmm. If you were to go to a dot com source, it's just going to be some Joe Schmo that posted some bullshit and it's probably going to scare you. I mean, how many people do you know that have said I've Googled it and now I'm freaking out or people will say, I don't want to Google it because I don't want to freak out. I do the opposite. I Google things so that I do not freak out because if you perform the appropriate search, you can learn a lot about the scenario and then go from there rather than just you know, thinking, oh, I have cancer because the first thing that I read says, if you have bumps on your arm, it's cancer. When you look for something on Google, by the way, how many results do you get? And we're talking millions, right? Literally yeah, millions a shit ton. of, right, of, of sources that you're getting this information from. So if I want to, the, the original question was, if you were to ask yourself a, a nutrition question, where would you go? What would you, where, you know, what would you put in the search? If I put in my uh, nutrition question in Google, oh my God, I would have probably millions, maybe even tens of millions of things. So how do I know? How do I now disseminate from that huge, gigantic, almost endless list to the thing that I want? And normally I know that the, the, there's a formula that goes into Google that has the most uh, top uh, answers. This is where things get a little bit skewed because those top, let's say five or 10 results, those are now a choice between the person to say, okay, I want to, I'm going to go with the top one just because it's a top one. But why is it there? Is it because it's the most clicked? Is it because it's been asked the most questions? Is it there because, um, again, is it just clickbait? Is it actually real? You know, this is where all of the websites that come into Google, they actually are listed down below. It's anything that has a .gov to it. We would definitely recommend you going to that site first because it is, it's, it's going to be factually based. It's based on science. It's based on research. And it's based on things that, um, that literally scientists have been going over for years and making it that reputable. My, my, my one response is, uh, what does the CDC end with? It doesn't end in cdc.com. It's a cdc.gov website. So we have to go there to, um, to to answer a lot of really important questions over the past year and a half, obviously, of what's been going on. So, yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent point that you bring up because it can be overwhelming. And so people will just go to the first source that they see because it's easy and maybe they think that that's the best one. When I think about performing a quick search on Google, I think about performing a search on Amazon. When I look for Hmm. some type of product and I see like the first five are sponsored ads, I don't touch them. Oh, I skipped those. Yes. Thank you. I wanted to. So take that when you look at Google and just weed out 
the first five, for example, if they, you can tell, you can tell just by looking at it, if it's some type of advertisement for, especially if you're looking in the medical field, if you're looking at side effects of a drug or something, you're going to get something that's actually going to be trying to promote consuming that drug. So I just did a really quick, um, Google search just to give an example. So I did two different things. First, I looked up ketogenic side effects. Again, I'm just using this as an example. The first thing that comes up is ketogenic diet side effects by news-medical.net. And now when people look at this, they see a list of side effects, which is nice. It's pretty, it's quick, and it's just like, okay, it's right there. I have to trust it. So let me see if I can actually hold it up and well, we got a, a bulleted list. All right. You don't need to know what they say, but for example, that was perfect. It was thirst, blurred out, but yeah, frequent urination. So, right. so, okay. Now let's do the opposite. So that's just the first one. The second one is healthline.com. Third one's healthline.com. Fourth one's prevention.com. So it just, the list just keeps going on everydayhealth.com. All right. So now I perform the same exact search and I say ketogenic side effects and then I put .gov. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just usually put, just put gov, not you don't have to put .gov. And yeah, usually the those top thing, 5 answers you're right about the whole advertisement thing because again, that's what I was kind of referring to. It's is it clickbait? Is it is it something that that advertisements wants you to look at because that specific website is riddled with ads that have been you know that has a lot of money spent on like those are things that I'm that I wanted to uh, to, to to bring up and be very careful careful about whenever you are doing that research or trying to find your answer. Some people are going to put stuff in front of you that they want to have you just look at. That happens right. even in conversation, but yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. A great go, go ahead and continue because because I can say probably a very large percentage of the population that's that really wants information and that is trying to look something up is probably going to take the easy route out and go for maybe the clickbait or whatever's first just because they simply don't know little you know thing ways around you know getting so here we go first thing so i type in ketogenic side effects and i type gov next to it mm -hmm. and the first thing that we get is ncbi which is nih.gov and a lot of times when you look at NIH.gov, they're going to give you really intricate data. So this is where I get a lot of my peer reviewed articles from when I'm doing research. But now when we're talking about the general public, if you're performing a Google search, which means just a basic Google search like I just did, you can get these nice articles from NIH.gov that aren't very scientific. So they're in lay terms. And so the first thing that comes up is adverse effects. And it says the most common and relatively minor short-term side effects include symptoms like nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and insomnia. So this is a much shorter list than what we saw. It's a lot less scary with respects to the type of side effects that it's saying will happen or occur with the ketogenic diet. And it's a much more valid source. Do you take what this article says and say, well, this is what's happening. If you're on the ketogenic diet, you are going to be vomiting every day. You're going to have headaches. You're going to be fatigued. You're going to be nauseous. Don't do it. It sucks. Doesn't it say possible side effects? It says the most common side effects. Oh, most common. Okay. And so that's definitely going minor. to happen. Yeah. I see. That's. That's, that's, that's where people just need to be careful with the lingo. A lot of people are like, well, this is definitely going to happen to you. One, two, three, four, five. It's like, hey, calm down. It's just common side effects. I mean, Those are things that have been found in, in, in these specific case studies. Relax. These right. things that and might seems, happen. They could happen. It seems <clears> people, obvious people to, to say to people need to be careful with the lingo, but people aren't. And that's, mm -hmm. that's where I get into that rant of just be careful with how you're disseminating your information yeah information. yeah I, and and i love the fact that that the, the 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 whole ad thing came up naturally just because like in the dig, in the digital world anytime an ad comes across your screen it's like me and you trying to have a a nice conversation we're trying to figure out something we're trying to solve some sort of a a health related issue or something like that and literally it's like somebody walking up with a vote for whoever the fuck is this and just standing in the middle of us it's like dude x get the fuck out of here i'm not talking to you 
Right. You know, like hey, if, if, you, if you talk to me you. about it, I'll give you the answers. Vote for Donnelly. Vote for Donnelly. It's like you're an ad. Please get out of here. Like in real life, get the, f- the X bar. Punch some you in people, the face. Get out of this were. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> And that, I mean, that's, that's why we're having this, this, uh, this conversation. We need to make sure that people um, don't get confused while they're doing their own dissemination. They, they, they need to make sure that those ads need to steer clear because all they want is to you to go to that website and spend money on stuff that you most likely don't need. It's just stuff that's in the way. It's like a freaking ad in the middle of a YouTube video. Ads are just becoming an absolute nuisance lately and they're invading and it's really annoying. And it's, it started with a conversation, just a simple conversation years ago. Uh, now they're all over these search uh, websites and, and, and YouTube videos. I'm just like, my golly, I can't even, golly. I, I, I can't even, I can't even friggin' like enjoy a, a, a YouTube song without it being cut in the middle. And then I have to, I have to, I'm forced to watch this 15 second video um, but, you know, about something that I'm just simply not interested in. It's an it's a rude interruption and I'm just not a big fan of it. So, well, I, I hate I hate that ads are just so centralized now. They're just everywhere. Get out of the way. I'm trying to find an answer here. Thing to, yeah. you well, know, that's true, Spotify too. Yeah. Or... Buy a CD, dude. <laughs> there's there's simple. Re- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to keep the show entertaining. All right. Old I know school. that's yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm still thinking that I still think that discs man are a thing. I think that like, you know, when you put in that cassette with the wire attached to a CD player, I still think that's hip. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, I just, you don't have to worry about advertisements. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you, if you pay a subscription, you have to pay money to get rid of those ads. Well, I don't want to spend money for that. I agree. I always think that that's people all. that go around and talk about things that they're passionate about and they're like they're advocates for i'm like are you promoting this company like i'm so confused you're so adamant about this this and that where do you, like what are you doing why are right. you what do you do for a living sir yeah why is why is it so single-sided let's have let's have a conversation about it yeah absolutely not very uh give and take it's just you know we'll go walk through that door quickly because that's the right answer I yeah. read that somewhere. You yeah. Know. And so what I'll do is if I do find, you know, one solid article, usually this is the researcher in me. It takes me down a rabbit hole and I will just keep researching until I find something that satisfies me. For example, my dog got a, um, he got a last, just a cut laceration on his forehead last night from another dog. And I've, I've never seen that on him before. So at first I was like, Eh. And you know how they say, you know, a human needs stitches if the cut is smiling, you know, not necessarily like just like a whatever. So the cut was smiling at me and I was like, oh, oh shit, I got to take him. And then I stopped for a second and I was like, hold on. Also, I, t- I think if it if it moves, like if it's around the eyebrow and they start doing this motion, if it opens and shuts, they need stitches also. Right. Yeah. If it, I know it sounds disgusting and I'm sorry to bring this up, but if it winks at you. Uh, I had this cut here in hockey one time before and I was going like, I didn't know that it was there. I thought I was just sweating a lot more than I usually do. <clears throat> and it was just an open cut. There was just blood everywhere. And um, my, my trainer told me to, uh, to to stop moving my eyebrows. And I'm like, I didn't understand what she was talking about. She was getting grossed out that what happened to your dog happened because oh, it kept opening and closing. And I didn't know because it was I, I couldn't see it myself. Um, your, so yeah. your laceration was just winking at your coach. She's like, Whoa. yeah, it was. Yeah, the trainer, it was right here on the bridge. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it. There's a tiny little scar right there. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but there there is a scar Damn, on the bridge of my nose up cream. here. God. Yeah. I'm kidding. Fuck you, all right. Just like, <laughs> go ahead go ahead with your dog cut story, okay? Tell us about your dog's <laughs> laceration I'm, I'm on just, his eye. Juggy, I'm just messing with you. It's only because you're <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> um, wrinkle wrinkle cream. Don't get me started. <laughs> These are wise so, crow's eyes. So I started doing my own research and uh, just to see, you know, I wasn't like when I kind of Googled like when to take my dog to the hospital, you know, at what stage of a laceration is it time for him to get stitches? And then I'm like, websites came back. Yeah. And then I'm like, stop. What are you doing? (laughs) So, (laughs) so I switched gears and I was like, okay, what is the best? You know, I, I thought about it as like me. How would I take care of it? 
if it was me and it wasn't bleeding at all. So it, it looked worse because of his fur. He has long hair, his fur. Mm-hmm. He is a long hair dog. So it looked worse. And yeah, the I, blood was starting to get trapped in the fur and it just looked horrible. Mostly. No, That's there, what you're it saying? wasn't even really bleeding. It was just kind of like, I think okay. where it was there, it was mostly cartilage. So he didn't really hit like any major arteries or anything like that to where it would make blood gush. So I made the executive decision to keep him home. I didn't want to waste my time bringing him in and they're going to be like, now you're fine. Long story short, I started researching the best types of care for a dog for disinfectant, you know, for some type of a cut. And the moral of the story is I didn't just use one source. So I looked at three, maybe four or five different sources, and I gathered the common consensus from all of those different sources. And while you don't need to look at 30 million different sources to come up with a conclusion about the bump that you have on your arm. It does help the more research that you have to back it up as anything, the more reliable the consensus that you come up with is going to be. So absolutely. So when you do perform that Google search using gov next to whatever you search and then gathering information from multiple different thoughts. And that can be for anything. It doesn't have to just be for fitness. It can literally be for anything that you're searching. And if you want to get more advanced, start using Google Scholar and all you have to do. So Google Scholar is the more advanced search engine for Google. And you can find tons and tons of peer reviewed journal articles from there. And it's more advanced reading, but that is where you are going to find the best peer reviewed information that you can about whatever it is that you are uh, looking at. And as anything, it's like shopping, there are filters. So if you're trying to find something specific, you can filter in, you know, if you want a newer article, you can filter in the year, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah. I love that you've mentioned Google scholar because honestly, I completely forgot about that ever since I left college. Cause that was mentioned. And that is something that you can look at <clears throat> And if you really want to win your arguments, folks, because that's what we're really trying to do here, um, we're trying to get you the ammo <clears throat> and the evidence that you need in your arguments so that you can back it up and say, hey, I looked this up on Google Scholar. I had exactly where we, where it came from. These are the, the factual statistics. And that's what we're doing here. OK. And if the other person on the other end of that argument can't understand uh you know, what you were trying to do, then they shouldn't be arguing in the first place because most arguments end up in differences of opinions and nobody wants to search for facts. So, so glad that you can actually narrow down your search. You can literally filter it out uh, with something like Google Scholar, which is also another reputable source. So this is good stuff. And there's nothing wrong with challenging people. I think it's awesome to share your opinion and get an opinion from someone else. And not everyone's going to want to do that. So if you go and ask that question, like, who is they? And the person's like, Mm -mm. and you can see that they're not ready or they aren't willing to engage in some type of intellectual conversation with you about whatever, which then that's fine. Sometimes I am in that situation. I'll admit every single time when I say that's a little bit outside my radar, I'm not a hundred percent sure about, for example, when we talk science, it, it, it's chemistry for some reason chemistry just doesn't really click in my brain as well as Same. anatomy physiology biology and, and and things like that i can i can explain things but man chemistry it's just it's a different beast so i don't mind getting into uh shout out to victor market by the way he, he actually does help me out a lot with this chemistry stuff and that, and that is a fact that piece of shit he's um he's, he's very good at that and i will admit that that's just a weak area like there's no shame in admitting where something is just simply weak and I'm willing to do a lot of that research. I have, I I have so many breaking bad questions for that guy. Um, And I know that I can look it up myself. (laughs) I know that I can look it up myself, but um, just uh, for me personally, hearing, hearing it from somebody who already went through that already went through the Google scholar stuff already went through looking it up at record sources, exactly went through his dot gov stuff. I'd rather pick his brain because I trust that he's already gone through that work. Absolutely. That's why whenever somebody says, Oh, I have a bachelor's in this, I, I tend to pay attention. I, I I'm pretty sure that they're not bullshitting. If somebody says I have a PhD in this, I'm really sure that they're not bullshitting. So 
uh, with that being said, if somebody is just going to argue with something, that's why people say like, well, what do you do for a living? And have you looked that up? And are you sure about that? People get really defensive and they get, and they get very, they get very angry. And that's where the arguments start coming out. I, I, I hope, hopefully people, enough people see this where it's, it's just, you don't have to go to that area. We're just trying to help. We're trying to help people appropriately look things up and appropriately, uh, appropriately go through a conversation or an argument. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, injury and a probably. We're oh, back, man. baby. We are rusty, but we are back. <laughs> that's part of us. It. But that's the thing. We'll make our mistakes, but we'll keep on moving forward. We're trying to help people do things the right way. And hopefully that'll have more ammo and arguments or or, uh, or conversations, because all we're doing is trying to seek the right answers. Right. So. And together, because like you just said, I don't know a lot. There's still so much Neither for me to I. learn. And when I'm teaching, if a student asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I flat out I say, tell him to fuck himself and sit down. Get the fuck out of my class, bitch. Get the hell out of here. Why don't you Google Scholar that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't like, like when students, from my subbing experience, I hate when students think that they have all the right answers and I'm going, young one. There's oh, always going to be one. Oh, little ones. one. Yeah, then there, there yeah. always will be. Oh, little one, you know absolutely nothing. But I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you that I don't have to answer you because I'm going to get paid either way. <laughs> I don't care about you when you're seeking answers. You look it up yourself like I had to. And if you can't do that, you're going to stay in that area forever and you're never going to go anywhere. God, I love kids. Yes. I love students. They're so much fun. But it's only that one kid in that classroom that just ruins it for everybody. Oh, of course. But, but um, but, they, but then they, they, they but then they become adults and now we have to answer to, you know, to somebody who just is lazy and they don't want to look at the right answers. And, uh, and and we all have to suffer because of that. So they turn into very ignorant, angry people. And uh, yeah, we have to deal with that. That's unfortunate. Ignorant, angry people that go and shoot up houses and uh, yeah, look for people mowing lawns, oblivious people next door, just like mm, gunshot. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look this up to see if this makes enough noise for people to call the cops on me. That guy <laughs> missed front, that step. I'm on my front porch Googling like doc of <laughs> what does a gun sound like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to get decibel readings. That's the thing. You're going to get decibel level readings. Oh uh, my God. That is so funny, but it's true though. It's like, man, if that person just did a little bit more research, he could have, he could have been, he could have been successful with that robbery with a knife but he fucked up and brought a gun, startled you, had the cops called on him, and now his life's ruined. And all he could have done was watch our show. You could have had it, you could have had it big, buddy, but you just didn't do it. You didn't simplify your health, and now you're in a complex problem with the police. Tell your friends, like, follow, share, subscribe. Simplified health. Get it today. Get it now on... Don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, see. Somewhere. Pending. It's going to be Pending. somewhere. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> That's right. We'll um, put it on a dot gov website. That's what we're absolutely. Gonna now it's going to so, be a, re a reputable show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this That's has so been good. a lot of fun, Juggy. I'm glad that we're back. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to shoot back. for one a week again. No, we're going to do one a week again. We're, I'd we're like on, I'm on break. I know you're working. You got a job, but we're going to shoot for one a week. We're going to get, yeah, we got funny content. hours. The, the whole, I, yeah, I picked up a restaurant gig. So mostly my stuff is in the evenings, but generally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is usually free. They like to give me my, uh, my early in the week off so that I can crush it on the weekends, which is why I'm here now. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We can definitely, we, I, I would love to crush that might see some uh, familiar faces. Might may, maybe see some friends that have been on with us in the past. Um, we'll talk about some different and, and various things. Um, yeah, we're going to move this train forward. We're getting a lot of love. We're getting a lot of feedback from people who uh, who really like the the stuff that we're doing. The, a, a, a slightly more serious no approach. Why. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck they miss us. Like, look at us. We're what? glowing. We talk about each other's sweat, make fun <laughs> of each other's skin complexions. I don't know why people love this shit, but. They do. And that's what we're here. We're here to give them more, more, more. So we, we brought in our horizons. We're going to talk about a lot more topics, not just fitness, but we're going to talk about general health. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of people did miss us. And that really made me feel good. So I'd like to continue this. 
for sure. Absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram, my first and last name, Laura Mangone. There is no secret to that. I am who I am, like it or don't. And you can also find me on Twitter at chick underscore Mangione underscore. And Juggy, what do you got? What's your what's your thing? Oh, yeah. You could follow me at Juggy Haha. Ha. Got some ridiculous funny stuff on that gag. Follow me on uh, Twitch. I got Juggy010. Uh, a big day on Saturday. We have a day one raid uh, going on in our clan uh, with our, with our gaming stuff. So, uh, we're, I'm, I'm going to be streaming around one o'clock ish, maybe a little bit after that on Saturday. If people are around, uh, come and check me out, uh, and see some of us, uh, solve problems as they're happening. Uh, that's usually the, what we like to do. We're going to go ahead and they're, they're, the game's going to throw some problems at us for the first time. And we are there to decipher locks. We're there to figure out problems and we're there to, work as a team and communicate and hopefully we can get that done. So big day on Saturday for me. It's gonna be a lot of fun for all you uh, gaming fans out there. But other than that, I'm just happy to be back. This is a lot of fun. I've, I, I definitely miss this. And I just, um, I, de I definitely miss having the a ability to help other people, even though it's just what seems like just us and playful banter and, and mostly bullshit. A lot of people actually do feel like they're being helped.